Have you, 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 have you, ever, have you never watched the show? What's up, everyone? Oh, wait, this is there's Jason. that button. What's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker. This is WP Water Cooler, episode number 149. Today's topic is Steve's favorite one, which is optimizing WordPress for shared hosting. Oh, yeah. Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. We go in alphabetic order. Dave, Josh, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm a software engineer and CTO at Spectrum Technologies. I'm also the architect and lead developer on Peepso, a new social media, social networking plugin for WordPress. Awesome. Great. What about you? Hi, I'm Drake Berry. I'm the founder and lead developer at Oso Studio, a WordPress engineering company in Austin, Texas. Awesome. What about you, Greg? Hey, everyone. Greg Taylor from Marketing Press. Uh, happy to be here. It's been quite a while since I've been on the show. We've missed you. Sure. That's what you say now. <laughs> I did. the end of the show. Just now. Yes, yes, I you. We discovered I know you too well, sir. Greg's a New Yorker. So there might yeah, be some salty right. language today. Oh, blame <laughs> me, please. Have you met Say Reed yet? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> Here I am. Hey, Jason Cosper, tell us about yourself. <clears throat> well, my name is Jason Cosper. I am the developer advocate over at WP Engine, and I'm happy to be here for a second time. Awesome. Say, what about you? Oh, hi, guys. Well, it's so good to see you again. My name's Sayre <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it with a straight face. <laughs> I can't. Oh, I've been told that before. Okay, my <laughs> name is Sayre and I do WordPress stuff, teach WordPress, make WordPress, love WordPress, preach WordPress, at Sayre Media on all the things, and I am sorry in advance. I've been traveling, and I'm tired, so it'll be fun today, guys. And <laughs> Suzette. Problem. Suzette. Hello, self. everybody. I'm Suzette Frank. I'm a teacher with Girl Develop It, and I'm also a front-end developer, and I love WordPress. Awesome. Thanks for being on. How about you, Steve? I'm um, Steve Zengit. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress meetup. And we're not meeting tonight. None of the meetups are meeting tonight. We'll finally, meet finally one night, right? All right, I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me, <laughs> Jason Tucker. <laughs> on Twitter, and I blog over at wpmedia.pro and jasontucker.us. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing WordPress. Suzette, you are the one that brought up this topic. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Now, wait, our, our, our audience is telling us all that we should get along more, so we should work on that today, I think. <laughs> Have you Basically, seen the show, Steve? I do not agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> I believe that we should take Can't we all just get along? No. Oh, no, God. no, get along. Oh, yes. Basically, I wanted to talk about different ways to optimize shared hosting because so many people are on shared hosting. Um, and there are some things that you can do to kind of improve the speed and performance of your website. But it really, it's going to ultimately depend on your host. But there's a lot of different things that you can do. So those are the types of things that I wanted to discuss. Like what are some easy things that people can do to improve the speed on their website? I, oh, I have one. It's like a great tip I give to all my clients. Yes. Don't use GoDaddy. Ooh. <laughs> it's like, right out of the cage. It's like, oh. yeah. so you, the first first missing, you know, Harsh. I've been on this coast and I'm censoring myself. Oh, so well, I'm. Now, anyway. Let's, okay, well, let, let, let's discuss that for a second because we, we have said that a lot, but let's, let's be fair. Okay? Who uses GoDaddy on a regular basis with their clients? For hosting. For hosting um, on this panel, as opposed to what? For like fun times? So <laughs> no. It's not one of the ones that we recommend or we use often. See, because here's the deal. I get clients and their system, and I can re make recommendations that they move. I can make recommendations if they've started. If they're starting fresh, I will put them on the right path. Um, but oftentimes, I get clients who already have a site set up and are already there. And so I am often working within that system. And I must say, to their credit, they have at least improved their control panel. And but um, I still have trouble with those sites all the time going down, not working, and there being instances of problems with WordPress. And this is just on their shared hosting. This is not their managed WordPress optimized Bullshit. Okay, and, and I said what I said because I, I, I kind of want to use GoDaddy metaphorically, right? There's there's several other hosts that fall into the same category, right? Not all yep. shared hosting is created equally. That's true. Correct? So yep. there are some shared hosts that Preach. are better than others. 
But there are some that are created equally because they're all owned by the same company. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jason. Guest host, blue host, Andrew host, host skater, host your mom, What's host that your parent face. company called? EIG. EIG. Oh. Yeah. And what does that stand for? Egregious. Two words expressed are by I'm just asking, is that what it stands for? I don't really know. I don't know. What what you're saying about GoDaddy, I've heard the same thing about, you know, Bluehost over the years. You know, I hear it in my meetup all the time. And that's true though. It's true. I would say they're on par. But here's the real question, and this is what I actually want to know from some of the harder core like devs like Dave or whatever. Like what is it that's so messed up about their servers? Like why is it that there's so much drama? Like what is happening? Why are they not doing their job? I think the main thing is that a lot of times with shared hosting especially, they will overload those servers. Uh, they generally take older uh, retired servers that have been around for a while and they, they put them into the shared hosting environment and then they'll move uh, seven, eight, nine hundred domains hosted on that one server. So you've got a very small amount of RAM per host. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of uh, domains being hosted on that same machine and all that traffic for all those domains go to that one server. Yeah, we found out with a site that we, that we migrated off of actually GoDaddy a couple of months ago uh, whenever we were trying to figure out what all of the issues were that they were having, downtime and everything else, uh, we found out that they had over a thousand sites that were being hosted through that same through that same server that they were yeah. trying to that they were trying to use, and it was just it was a mess. That'll do it. How did you find that out? Um, we finally just kept calling and calling and calling their support, and kept getting escalated up to the next highest level. And finally, they came out, and they were like, "Oh, well, this is what's really happening there." Wow, you got an nice. honest answer. That's impressive. I yeah. found that if you call back repeatedly to GoDaddy, you will eventually end up at the right answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Someone I'm not sure that that has the right point there, but I got the answer <laughs> that I needed at the time. <laughs> then they were promptly fired. Yeah. Okay, yes. so in our community, what's a, what's a decent shared host? SiteGround. SiteGround. SiteGround, yes. well, SiteGround is good. And Site5 also I've been looking into um, as a kind of localer version, which um, isn't actually all that local if you look at where they're, where they're distributed and whatnot, but they're, they're more local what? than Bulgaria. Okay, so but as, if you so care about that stuff. Local. So, as far as shared hosting goes, I, I also um, I don't know how the rest of the panel will feel about this, but... Um, DreamHost, I've always had some pretty good success with them. Uh, they tend to employ people who are in the WordPress space who kind of know and optimize and stuff like that who can, who can help out. I see, I've, I've, um, I, I really appreciate the quality of the people and, and the amount of time that DreamHost allows its people to spend in the WordPress community. And they that means that they will help you and whatnot. But I've actually had, I haven't used them in like maybe a year or two. But the reason I haven't used them is because I had so many difficulties with sites on DreamHost. So they may have gotten better and they are a quality company in their desire to help and their willingness to help. And they're also local. But I haven't necessarily had the best experiences with them, but they are people I'd be willing to give a second chance to. So what about InMotion? I've never used InMotion. I've never used them either. I, I haven't used them for shared hosting, but I do have a, a VPN. Okay. And so how are you defining shared hosting? Is is the the basic package you get at WP Engine, is that shared hosting? Um, so um, as far as that goes... They're not going to call it shared hosting. <laughs> It's it's not shared hosting. It is managed hosting. However, it the environment is shared amongst several customers. Right. Um, a lot of the managed hosts with kind of the lower priced plans um, do do some little bit of sharing, um, but they definitely add some kind of managed touches that take it a step above that. Okay. Well, GoDaddy has managed hosting uh, for WordPress also, and I am 100 percent well, I can't say I'm 100% certain, but I'm 99.9999% that that's, you know, straight but up just their shared stuff in a controlled environment. Doesn't shared describe the technology and managed describe the support? Yeah, so yeah, so I don't think that they're they're too What we're talking about is the technology. Steve's yeah. trying to define hardware. terms here. <laughs> I could all well, skip that. Do you need oh, to oh, do you do Wikipedia do that? Yeah, yeah Wikipedia, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. According to Wikipedia, shared means 
No. I think you should be, you should have to look up all of the definitions on the Urban Dictionary, and that's that job. should be like just confined to that. I'm gonna go look up shared hosting on really? the Urban Dictionary. See what that says. It'll, 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 it'll mean some sort of like weird sex act. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll and then I'll send you a link to the uh, New York Urban Dictionary. So. <gasps> I can so see, I can see Jason panicking right now. <laughs> Steve, this, this is perfect though. So there there there's actually a few different types of shared hosting then. So you can have you can have like a you know VPS that's running on a shared piece of hardware, actual hardware with multiple you know multiple instances of an operating system running on there. Then you also have a one you know one instance of that operating system running with multiple users that are running on it. We typically call share hosting the latter, where it's multiple users on the same you know both physical as well as virtual hardware kind of sitting there running on the same, you know, uh, uh, operating system environment. And so for, for people that are watching that may not know the difference or w what you just said, can shared hosting be put into, like, a pricing tier? It, you know, I, I would assume that anything in, like, the $10 lower range is shared hosting. Probably, and probably yeah. with crappy shared hosting. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like apartment living, Safe bet. you know? It's kind of like apartment living where you have all these people all going into the same building. I mean, that's my the metaphor. Building. With yeah. the same address. The same address with the same front door, and you have all these people trying to go in, go in through that front door. Well, then you can also have, uh, you know, a VPS where you could have multiple apartment buildings that are living on the same lot. Or and condos. Each one of the, yeah, like condos. And so yeah, well, they, they have their own I door. I like to think about those as townhouses. <laughs> Townhouses, yeah. Townhouses, yeah. Condos. So, so, I have, I so have my, a... my sites are in the mobile home community. What's that? And you, yeah. <laughs> and you have the picture. <laughs> sounds about right. You guys, I have, um, I have two things to say. First of all, the name of EIG is Endurance International Group. Okay. The only two things. Second of all, they bought Site Five. I was just informed. Thank you, AJ Morris. And uh, that is no longer something. You should, so. Pretend I never said that. Okay. Said what? Aww. And this is actually the problem with hosting is that hosting companies are eaten up by bigger hosting companies pretty much continually. So it's really even hard. You know, like EIG's got these all these separate brands that it's they're actually how the many same. They have, they have yeah. so many, and they 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 ruined HostGator. And HostGator even admitted to me at one point that their their service went completely down. Like at a conference I was at, they were like, "Yep, it was terrible." Um, I but, used to use HostGator. And I moved away. Me too. Same Likewise. thing. Likewise. Likewise. This sucks. I had so much trouble. I had so much trouble, and uh, yeah, it was a nightmare for a so while. I've got my cat blog. I've set up my ten dollar a month hosting yeah. package, or four ninety nine a month hosting package. Two ninety five for Whatever. the first year. Okay, yeah. I've got my hosting. He's package. got premium shared hosting. Set. And and my site is is going down all the time. What 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 do I do? Pray. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll curl up in the fetal position, cry There's for a while, probably and then a few what things. do I do? You <laughs> could call the host and ask them if they can move you to a different server that might have fewer uh, domains installed on it. See, so that really is bad bad the same host, You could do that. That might be an option. I've, I, that used to work, and I would call have clients call GoDaddy and do that. They, unless you're really super hyper aggressive, they're not doing that as much anymore. Yeah. yeah, and I, it I, also I, I, could just postpone the problem because they yeah. they might add another hundred domains to that same server next month. You may and be the bad neighbor. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that's exactly what I was about to say. Is you're only that's only really a temporary band aid is when you get yeah. moved to another server. Uh, since some hosts, uh, shared hosts especially, uh, tend to pack the servers just because of utilization. Um, they're kind of expecting like an eighty twenty rule. Um, that um, you know, a very small percentage of the customers will cause the most traffic. Most everyone else won't. Yeah. Um, and eighty percent of those customers won't even notice when their site goes down, exactly. or or care, or think there's something that they can do about it. Yeah. Well, if they don't know, they don't they won't care. If they have handy Jetpack installed, then Jetpack will tell them, and then they'll panic because they'll get all these emails if they're on Jetpack and like GoDaddy, it'll be like your site's down. No, it's not. Your site's down. No, it's not. It's up. It's down. Okay, so okay. what's another alternative? Steve, you know all about that, right? Uh, <laughs> absolutely. It happens in my so cat blog all the time. <laughs> um, so we've used Cloudflare in the past with, uh -huh. a couple of, with a couple of super, super small clients when we were first starting out uh, with their, I think they call it like their always online or always on or something like that technology um, that keeps that cached version there. Tells you that it's a cached version, uh, but that's better than nothing. 
So cl Cloudflare is something that sits completely off of your server, right? It, mm -hmm. it, right. So so it's it's caching. It's a it's a layer before the the traffic even gets to your server, right? So you have that extra added yes. layer for scalability. So yeah. that that sort of thing is actually not very accessible for entry level people who are doing it, and that's on. On some Cloudflare is a little complicated. It, well, on some web hosts it is. So, for instance, if you're on if you're on um, uh, SiteGround, there's just a one-click install, just like you would install WordPress. You can install WordPress, then go over there and say input, install their uh, site. You know, install Cloudflare, and then you're up and running. And Cloud, you know, Cloudflare. Cloudflare I have a question for, for my. I'm sorry, real quick, Suzette. For for my cat blog, Cloudflare is free. <laughs> right. It is. It is. Yeah. Free. So the price yeah. is right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we yeah, all I mean, know the value of free. Suzette? <laughs> My question. Um, so I was going to say, what do you guys think about, because I know that this was a problem with one of my customers before. Um, they had shared hosting, but the shared hosting was actually had to do with the database server being on the same box as the website. So the database was getting really hit hard. And so they had to move just the database portion off onto another server, and that greatly improved the service. Because then you're not having as many calls to the database, because it really can get sluggish. I, I think that's, that's an option, but it might be a little technical for some. And some shared yeah. hosts may not even offer the ability to do that. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that. I doubt that, that most shared hosts would do that. Yeah, I did all the so on this to install WP Supercache. So basically, we're talking about InMotion and SiteGround because have we ever? You no, know, so Site Five's out, Little Orange is done, everything else is EIG. So what else are we talking about? Like, what options do we even have here? Is it really just GoDaddy and everybody else? Anybody? It's getting that way. Yeah. What is this? What? Media <laughs> Temple. <laughs> no, they got they got they got GoDaddy. Got GoDaddy. Uh, so, all right, so. But what, for what Suzette was saying, I, Suzette was saying real quick. I just want to cover this. It's a way to offset some of that load on the database if you are on the same server is to install something like WP Supercache, right? So that's that's going to make it so that you instantly have less database calls. There's another good way that a lot of people don't know about, but actually, if you put this is a little bit more technical, but if you put the site URL and the home URL in your WP config, that URL doesn't have the data, they don't have to go to the database to get that information because it's in the WP config. So that saves like a lot of traffic going back and forth. Just like every image, everything will not have to go to the database to get the domain part because it's in the WP config. So what you're talking about is even though they're small calls, it's the number you're reducing the number of calls. Exactly. exactly. Well, and and speaking of um, pulling less data from the database, uh, there's also particular MySQL optimizations you can make. Uh, that get rid of uh, things like, and you know, for entry level people, you say stuff like transients and their eyes glaze over. Um, <laughs> but um, when you actually start optimizing for transients to remove transients, things like that, there are uh, plugins out there. I think Auto Optimize is one of them, or Auto Optimize, or something like There's that. There's WP um, Optimize. I know that one will. It doesn't work on all hosts. I yeah, have yeah. Auto Optimize uh, does something a little bit different. That one will combine JavaScript and CSS files. Okay, okay, that's right. That's um, another thing I, that would help. I, I have a MySQL file that I just kind of paste in, but a lot of uh, entry level people wouldn't necessarily have the know how to do that. But uh, it does go a through. A lot of them, or all of them, would not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna clarify. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> what does it do? Don't let say interrupt you. Yeah, don't let me. No. Um, so it gets it gets rid of um, revisions if you don't need them, trash posts, uh, spam comments, trash comments, uh, orphan post meta. Uh, if you delete a post, sometimes the post meta hangs around. Orphan comment yeah. meta when you're getting rid of spam. Uh, a kismet can add a lot of comment meta. Yeah. Gets rid of transients and orphaned relationships, like term relationships, things like that. Uh, gets rid of all of that stuff and can take a pretty sluggish site back to being pretty fast. Um, it, it's not a silver bullet. Nothing is, but it does help. But say there are there are plugins that do all of that or mm -hmm. very close to all of that. So it's just finding the right combination of them to kind of make right. it happen, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, configuring your also... site to not save all those uh, those post revisions can help too, because those can add quite a few uh, records into your database. Definitely. 
And, you know, keeping your site clean also can help because if it's running a lot of extra processes just literally on the front end that doesn't have anything to do with the software, you know, keeping your, I mean, this is pretty basic, but things like keeping your images down and keeping all that stuff, you know, figured out and stuff yeah. off your server, that yeah. actually really makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's just thing. Good, good housekeeping, good, uh, just good uh, best practice maintenance stuff there will help. Yeah. Now, that Jordan, brings up the next thing that I wanted to talk about, and that is the the, num the, the number and types of plugins that you're using. Mm -hmm. uh, I've run across some customer sites that had not one or two, but actually five different slider plugins installed and active. And, yeah. Some people would argue you don't need any, but doesn't, you really don't that need give five. You, doesn't that give you five times the slider power? Yeah. <laughs> No, it Steve, does. it does not. And then everyone will buy all your uh, third slide products. I've also I one time saw a slider with a slider inside of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh God, I heard you like sliders. Wow. It's in sliderception. Wow. Sliderception. Yeah, like, I think, don't, don't do that. That'll does cause it have, Does it have an assist in, like, time travel or something? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but another thing yeah, I've heard great people great ask idea. about is using multiple uh, security plugins. Should I use both iTheme security and WordFence? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, pick one that works best for you and use just the one. So should, um, I, use, uh, should I use Yoast SEO and all-in-one SEO pack? No. Absolutely. It doesn't give me double the SEO. And, and also no, just put them on because that's what's going to make your SEO better. Sometimes <laughs> less is more, Steve. Oh. What oh. about um, Super Cache and W3 Total Cache at the same time? That'll one. just cache It'll things extra cache. Much, right? You need some yeah. extra yeah. cache? That sounds like a good way to Wait, do it. Everybody needs just, more just, cache. Just, just, just so our audience that's only listening understands, the past two minutes was starcasm. Star yes. Chasm? Sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, starcasm. Yeah. Iron you, Man. you only need sarcasm. one caching plugin, <laughs> one security plugin, one optimization plugin, one slider plugin, if that. Wow. Um, yeah. So actually, I argue that you don't need any slider plugins. If you need a slider plugin, if you need it, <laughs> no, take I think, one. I think me. I think let's discuss the difference between needs and wants here, Dave. Okay. Yeah. When do you sure. need a slider? But some people think yeah. they need. All right, I'll give you that. I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. That, you know. Anyway, my point is, pick one, mm -hmm. use one. Pick one, pass it on. And yes. so, what about what about a plugin like um, um, uh, Smush It or something that that uh, reduces the sizes of your images? They're good, but they run heavy on the server, so it's better to do that offsite and not use your word, abuse your WordPress and make it do things like that. <laughs> you can also, uh, if you run the Jetpack uh, pack of packs. The um, Jetpack. The, the Jetpack jet pack. Pack, pack. Is that of like packs. the gauntlet? Jet pack pack. <laughs> um, the if you run the Jetpack pack and it's you like do Photon, one. that can help you as well as far as <laughs> images go, and that's, you know already kind of built in, so that's nice. You could do that in Cloudflare as well. You can actually turn on the option to be able to do all of that stuff. So do progressive, Why is the JPEG, with it, there's all that stuff built into it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, Jetpack will also uh, optimize your images, and if you're viewing on Chrome uh, with uh, their Photon service, will serve uh, WebP images, which are optimized, compressed down, in addition to, uh, so it'll actually replace the images that get served to... <laughs> And really what we're talking about is is decreasing the amount of bandwidth that's coming from your web server. Yeah. Yes. And load if your Jetpack, server. just for the record, as a little side note, if Jetpack's uh, design team, <clears throat> he's not on at the moment, but uh, ever got it together you look, and read... Did you look down in the... Like, <laughs> in the like, she in just the did. <laughs> Well, your no, I was looking walking. at the eyes. I was like, excuse me. Um, no, uh, if they could do a little something something with their slider, and then if you had Jetpack, you would already have a slider as a gallery option, so you wouldn't need all this extra stuff. The only problem with that is that their slider is really, really ugly. So other than that, it's it fine. It's kind of ugly, yeah. It's really ugly, and it's completely non-configurable, and I think I'll write a note about that to somebody. Get on that. So I'm, so I'm running a BBS on my Apple II Plus, and I want to put that on shared hosting. Which one should I pick? Your mom. Uh. Is that for your cat? You see how we, none of us even except me provide that with an answer? Everyone just like... Come on. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Uh, Wait, are we supposed to have a certain amount of bickering in the show? Yeah, it's uh, not according to, to our audience. Oh, I think we've at least seventy five percent. Kumbaya, my Steve. Kumbaya. 
All right, so we got five minutes left. What, what, what are some of the things that people should be looking at? Just if they were to load up the dashboard, look at it and say, "What I can change these three things because, you know, these guys said here's the things we should change. What, what, what are those three things? You're hosting. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a button in the dashboard to do that? Yeah. Look, and I'm, 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 being, I'm actually being half serious here, right? If you're, if you're paying five bucks a month for hosting... You get what you and, pay for. And, and, and you're running a serious website or a serious business, something's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Well, I don't necessarily think so because it depends on your your business goals. Like, so if you're really just like a retail shop, you're not selling it like in a brick and mortar, 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 <laughs> mortar. That's easy for you to say. Brick and mortar. Um, <laughs> is, uh, if you're like just sarcasm. doing that, and your site is really just a, uh, you know, just got basic, it's basic marketing stuff. You're not running any heavy things on there. You're just blogging, or whatever. I think that's something you can use as a startup to to get yourself going How and to get yourself. Well, wait. How, that's all true, but how important is your uptime to you? I mean, the thing is, is that like none of these even, and I, I, I get all the notifications. I see my clients' reports and stuff. Like, the downtime is like intermittent, and it's not for very long. So the problems that I think are more important as far as shared hosting are the server configuration issues. Like, that's the reason I don't like GoDaddy. Not because they're spotty and they come in and out. That's you know whatever. Like, it's it's down for two seconds. Someone hits refresh, it's back up. The problem is, is when plugins don't work or it's just configured really funkadelically. And that, to me, is even more of a problem on shared hosting than it is than is the is your site down for like three nanoseconds, you know, but, at whatever there, time. But there's something else that we didn't cover here, and I know we've only got a couple of minutes. But that that those sites, the the I can't even talk. The faster your <laughs> <site> loads, <laughs> the faster your site loads, the better you're going to rank in SEO. It does factor into your SEO. So, right, but so, that's not necessarily not, like that's yeah. about. Image optimization and that type of stuff that doesn't necessarily. It also has to do with the with the, just the just That's how true. fast that HTML gets to the browser. Yeah, time, I mean, and there's the first nothing bite you can is do. a factor of the host and the database and how many servers are on that machine, how much RAM the machine has. It, there's and a that lot of things. That's not something you can do on the front end, though. So Steve's right. I mean, if that what? is a concern to you. <laughs> Wait, what? Look, I'm only doing it because that guy said we had to get along. Okay. I didn't hear that. What was that? Steve <laughs> is. Right. Wow. August well, 17th. August 17th. Everyone yeah, write only, that down. It only took like 500 episodes. That's okay. So if you're playing at home, it's kind of great. It happens every so often. Yeah, so far I mean, if these are concerns for you and if this is, you know, if you are trying to be a, you know, that's the thing. Like a lot of startup businesses or even like people who are just blogging for the first time, like they aren't necessarily like, optimizing it so that their time to first buy it and their, you know, their images are loading and all this stuff is happening, you know, immediately. That's not necessarily their main concern. I think that that but, getting the site up, using the site, developing your content as a startup can, to me, is more important than making sure that you have a completely perfect optimized site because you can grow with that. And if yes. you don't have the content in the first place, if you focus and get, you know, just hyper focus on this stuff or, you know, try to out what? Yes. Steve yes. is praying. Everything. Yes. <laughs> but we're not talking the difference between five bucks and five hundred dollars a month. We're talking about the difference between five bucks a month and thirty bucks a month if you step up to like a WP engine. Right. right? Yeah. Is WP so, Engine only thirty bucks a month now? For yeah. one site, yes. But that's then, but then you also have to get your email, so that's you know. That's free or close. But a lot of hosts will actually move you for free. Yeah, wait. Yeah, I, I believe we do that. What email? Yeah, is free they, they actually have a plugin for that. <laughs> what yeah, free email right. are you using? Gmail, because that doesn't count. I think that's the topic for next week's show. <laughs> yeah. We use Gmail. That's the topic for next week's show, right? Actually, you know what, Jason? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually propose next week's show on this show. You're gonna I, propose wow. next cool. week's show? Let's have a show and talk specifically about GoDaddy, and let's invite Mendel on the show. Yeah, yeah. that would be fun. That would be fun. Let there be blood. Well, I mean, I, I will reach out no. to him. Will it be fun for Mendel? It, it, actually, he'll have a blast. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I'll be nice. Not like putting him in a hot seat. <laughs> yep, yep. I tweet at GoDaddy every so often. Mendel, it, Mendel, if you're listening, reach out to me. If not, I'm going to reach out to you. We'll talk. We'll talk. Reach, you guys are going to be like, 
All right. Well, that is about it for Coffee Talk today. Make sure you go to our website <laughs> at daytowatercooler.com <laughs> and click on the link. Would you chat the subscribe over buttons here. and stuff. It was if like butter. If you're watching the website on the, if you're watching the video on our website, you can click on all the subscribe links there. If you don't want to watch us but you just want to listen to us, you can listen to us via iTunes. Thank you and very you much for being on the show. Tell Thank us you. what you think. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.